Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's have a look at what's going on, alright? So it's basically just a recap of, of what I was saying these last couple of days is that, yeah, we see dumps and uh, that's all part of the part of the game, alright? So we're going to look at Bitcoin, Ethereum and a, and a bit of an overview of the Bitcoin dominance chart because we need to see Ethereum and the dominance chart to work out on a, on a whole what to expect from altcoins, alright? So just to let you know, I don't think it's... It's not bad news, right? It's not bad news. So just, uh, just don't worry. And it was like what I was saying yesterday. It's nothing to worry about. It's all okay. People were talking about this um, as the equivalent of 2017 into 18, a bubble pop. It's not a bubble pop. I'll tell you why. When you you will know when it's a bubble pop because what you'll see is a is a much more severe. Um, uh, situation. So what we had here is, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, it started off down here. We're basically in the space of uh, a month. We went up 241 percent at the end of the cycle, right? So Bitcoin runs on a cycle. At the moment, the cycle is still running as it should do, and the cycle is not due to end until towards the end of this year into into next year. But and it might not. It might even continue. We just don't know. It's it's still a relatively young asset, but as far as the uh, cycles are concerned they're still running to plan um, and then a bubble pop really does look like this all right so a massive top here and then a huge collapse by what 45 percent in the space of five days and then after that what we saw was a giant spring back up of 50 percent and then we saw a uh, big move back down by 27 percent and then a big move back up by 44 percent making a lower height much bigger bolder moves and um, much scarier and much more volatile moves than what we've seen already right not supported by moving averages at this point and um, just basically sell-offs to the to the extreme and that's a bubble pop big moves down massive bounces back up but not reclaiming the the all-time high and not respecting moving averages basically that's not really what's happening here what we had here is a, we had a big move up yeah we are well first of all I mean we'll just look at the move okay so we had a big move up and then a move back down to the center of the Bollinger Band yeah no big deal Um, a bounce back up uh, to this rejection point here Um, and uh, and then basically stabbed back down closed above the Bollinger Band uh, above the Bollinger Band at the moment and being rejected at, at this present moment so far on the 10 exponential so I'm not saying that this isn't going to go further down it could it could go further down um, and if it did it's, it wouldn't concern me either let's have a look at some of these um, indicators that I use so first of all we've got this fresh conversion baseline cross signifying the start of a new trend all right so we had a uh, we had this trend we had something like this going on from back down here so this was the trend beginning and the trend came all the way up to the top here and the trend ended here and then the trend began again a bit early for me to be honest with you which probably is why we had such a a big sell-off because it, it, people were getting a little bit too keen I think but I mean the signal was there the signals there to be traded and if we were to trade that on that candle body there from the top 57% from where we are at right now 37% so it's still quite good still pretty good and the trend is still in play no reason to dispute that this trend won't continue up and um, until we get something to sell to tell us that this is not going to continue up all right we don't have that so the trend is still intact this new trend that would be is still intact doesn't mean that it can't you know be highly volatile but it's still intact and actually it's in a constructive area at the moment the range to be concerned about at the moment would be between these two moving averages the center of the Bollinger Band being the 20 moving average and the 10 exponential um, so it's about a 6% range today it'll get less and less as each day goes on a break to the up from there well, should have a continuation breakdown should also have a continuation and if we're looking for continuations of the move down I'd probably say, I'd probably say that the green 50 exponential probably have it it was coming in at around about 42 Sorry, forty-one and a half thousand, I think, give or take, thereabouts, you know, and maybe forty or so. Worst case scenario, we have a full-on retrace back down to this level here, which is around about thirty-eight. Worst case scenario, at the moment, we're in between ranges. We're looking to establish if we're going to continue with an uptrend or actually break down to the downtrend. Last time we uh, we had one of these moves wasn't all that long ago. It came up, came back down, centre of the Bollinger Band, just like this one did, uh, with a nice bounce. Uh, and then we tested it a couple more times um, and with, with bounces and then we finally broke down below it testing the green 50 exponential where we basically found ourselves nice support and then created the uptrend so personally I'm not um, I'm not I'm not um, in favor of, a, of another dump nor am I in favor of, a, of, a, of an uptrend we're in the middle of ranges but overall if we go to the weekly what we see is 
the trend is still very much in play on the weekly moving averages all diverging nicely I'm really not concerned about that at all this is something that I often uh, refer to as well which the money flow index has a nice trend line on it as well so if we were to dump back down again this isn't going to give us a, an, a you know a price as to where it's going to come down to it will give us an entry point on the weekly uh, for basically what I would consider to be an absolute bottom uh, and we're far away from that at the moment so uh, you know more dump could happen definitely and um, but at the moment we're in between ranges very difficult to say um, but what I would stress is that you know whether you get stuck in a position or whatever you're doing um, I'm not a financial advisor so it's not for me to say uh, I, I would be pretty confident that uh, this uptrend is still in play and if this one's not in play this one certainly still is um, although you know this one does look a little bit high but you know at the same time the uptrends are still in play on the on the grander scale of things on the long term time frames so that uh, might not be very useful to you because I'm saying it could go either way what I am generally saying is that the uptrend is still in play whether we come down another 20% 30% from where we are at right now it's still in play so let's have a look at um, um, Ethereum, which uh, isn't as uh, it's not uh, it doesn't look quite as good, I have to say. So this one is still actually in an uptrend. I thought last night I I don't know what's going on with my indicators. It, it gave me a false read. I didn't make a video last night, but I remember looking at it thinking, oh, the the uptrend is finished. It's not actually the uptrend is still in play. The uptrend will finish when um, when these two um, lines cross, when the blue crosses that red. That would mean that the yeah you know, for the moment this massive uptrend that we've been playing is over. Uh, for now and we'll probably go into a period of consolidation doesn't mean that it's going to come all the way back down here so don't worry you know if we're looking at it right now it's 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 held up on the green 50 exponential the last time we had something like that we, we held up from there we've not broken down from there in a very 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 long time not since back down here it can happen though it could happen if it did there would be a probably a sizable retracement on it but for the moment um, I'm not feeling it uh, and also this hasn't this hasn't crossed but we are below the center of the Bollinger Band and which is generally means that we're likely to stay down below there so the chances are that that will cross and that this will signify the uh, the, the start of a consolidation period for for um, Ethereum uh, and and if that's the case we just have to play it by ear and see where we go consolidations they always end it doesn't mean it's a downtrend I think Bitcoin's probably going to take the lead for a little bit now, to be honest with you, if this ends up um, consolidating. Um, but that all that will be would be a distraction, um, and uh, alts will finally come back to life again. So if we look at the Bitcoin dominance chart, this is the range we've been playing from this uptrend here. There, I say it's an uptrend. It's an uptrend in level of support, um, where we're getting you know, supported from here and here. And recently, we've been touching it quite a lot of times to the point where it's it's kind of looking like an uptrend, but it's really not. It's very messy still. There's a lot of a lot of moves going on with alts still, a lot of money in alts, and um, it's kept the Bitcoin dominance actually really quite far down. And you can see that um, from that big move yesterday, which was the crash, um, alts were getting hurt way more than Bitcoin, and uh, we came all the way up and smashed above the uh, the 200 exponential. This is a death cross, by the way. This is a very you know it's pretty pretty bearish. You'd look at something like that normally and go that's pretty bearish. So I would expect a continuation uh, of this trend generally to go down. I wouldn't expect this to rally up or anything like that but in the short term um, I think Bitcoin is probably going to you know be the stronger of the assets generally speaking but I think it's just a distraction I think the way that this this chart is, is set up um, is is going to play out in a further decline in Bitcoin dominance over time so if you are holding on to alts and things like that don't get too worried if you start to see it going down don't don't panic if you're confident in the coin that you're trading um, then, uh, then, then try not to worry about it. I really don't think there's anything to worry about at the moment. I think with Ethereum going into what could be a consolidation period, um, it will allow for Bitcoin dominance to increase again, probably coming up to these levels again, if Bitcoin were to rally or if Bitcoin were to dump. Uh, alts is probably going to be weaker um, with you know the mother of all alts <coughs> looking like this. I would change my opinion if, uh, if, um, if for whatever reason Ethereum broke above 1800 um, and that would basically, because this signal hasn't yet been confirmed so we're talking about it like it has been, it's not been confirmed yet if Ethereum were to rally today or tomorrow it would probably get away with this uh, and, and this wouldn't be confirmed at all so we're talking about it like it's happened, it's not happened, it looks like it's going to happen but it's not happened so we can't trade signals that we think are going to happen, we, are, we can only trade signals that have happened right? So this one hasn't happened yet, but it does look like it might. But again, it hasn't actually 
happened. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is what it looks like it wants to do, but it doesn't mean that it will because then there's nothing confirmed yet. Again, with the Bitcoin dominance, I mean, it is taking another stab down to this level here, where again, this is where we generally hedge into Bitcoin anyway. So at this very moment in time, perhaps altcoins will rally against Bitcoin. And when the Bitcoin dominance chart comes down to touch this trend line again, then we go back into Bitcoin. And we play that game of tennis that we've been playing for a little while now. So we touch this, we buy into Bitcoin, to get into this, get into altcoins, touch this, buy Bitcoin. And then there was a trend line I had in here actually that we were able to play for a little while. And I think that's basically over with at the moment. More or less like that. So I suppose it's still kind of in play. It's very messy, very wicky. So you can see there's a battle going on here. It's a very skilled game of tennis with with uh, no party being any better than the other at the moment. So playing both sides is, is still probably the best way to do this have some bitcoin have some altcoins because at, at, at this level you know really they're uh, both are kind of winning uh, bit by bit there's not really any clear direction until this trend line is broken down from and we close down below here uh, with a few candle bodies then it will be another alt season I would say uh, alts will then start to rally once again even harder than they've rallied already which might sound crazy but with Ethereum looking a little bit like this I find it a bit hard to imagine unless of course we can reclaim 1800 so at the moment I think what we're seeing now is a, is a, is, a, is the nice bounce from this level so everything looks like it's in the green but technically it's it's not really is it from the all-time high it's not really in the green and um, we're still down from the all-time high and um, let's not get ahead of ourselves let's not assume that we're just going to rally from here but if someone put a gun to my head and said what do you think is going to happen I think both assets are going to have a period of consolidation sideways action maybe for a, uh, maybe even just a couple of days uh, but probably more for Ethereum we'll know more over the next few days if we get those signals but overall the market is certainly not a 2017-18 bubble pop situation it's just not all right we've not got that same kind of behavior we're not at that stage in the market cycle either so I really wouldn't worry too much about anything um, unless you're holding some terrible horrendous tokens that you bought right at the very very top maybe you do have something to worry about but again I'm not a financial advisor so I'd never tell you to buy or sell anything it's just my interpretation of these charts. Anyway, I'm doing a live stream tonight, so feel free to join me on there. The Telegram chat and the Patreon, it's all in the description below. If someone messages you claw, uh, pretending to be CryptoClick uh, with some kind of phone number or WhatsApp group or whatever, it won't be me. Um, all the links I would ever have are in the description of the videos, and I would never send anything else to anybody. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.